Spellcasting 101. Sorcerers get all the girls. You know, I was, uh, I believe, a sophomore in high school when this game came out. That was back in, like, 1990. Could have been a freshman. Could have been my freshman year of, of the school life. And it was published by, this game was published by Legend Entertainment. And uh, this was actually designed by one of the legends of gaming, uh, Steve Maretsky. He's been behind a lot of games, and he definitely infused some of them with his uh, quirky sense of humor. And I will say this, this game was designed with what you call two modes, nice and naughty. The difference is what needs to be done in certain parts of the game or what gets displayed. So like a true mature person, I played it on naughty mode. Of course, when I was a te when I finally got this game, I got this game in college. So yes, I'm going to play it in naughty mode. Uh, <laughs> I played the game in college. Uh, I had gotten it as part of a legend pack of legend games. It came with the pack came with about eight games on a CD-ROM. Uh, this this and the two others in the series. And to describe it in terms today, this is literally like Harry Potter in college. Uh, you have your main protagonist, Ernie Eaglebeak. Yep, they went with they went with alliteration for your main character, and uh, Ernie wants to go to college. He wants to go to Sorcerer's University. Unfortunately, uh, there is uh, one thing standing in the way, and that is his stepfather, Joey Rottenwood. He's your typical evil stepfather. Not the evil stepmother, it's the evil stepfather. Yeah. The father does not want anything, you know, doesn't want his, you know, the stepfather doesn't want Ernie to be something. So your little prelude chapter of the game is literally escaping from the house and this game is designed to have set multiple setups for how to get out of the house and of course once you escape and not only escape the house but escape the town you're in so Joey can't find you or can't catch you uh, you move on to Sorcerer's U. Now, you have a few days in which you should get things done. Attend class. Grow th go through the simulation. You don't have to do all of this, but it helps to do some of this. Because you'll get some information on what you're dealing with in the classes. And, of course, you attend parties. And at some point, you will be invited to uh, the, the uh, your advisor's place for dinner one night. Where you'll meet his wife, who is much younger than him. But also, you will find out that the school is going to be attacked at some point. In fact, at one point, just before the attack, your mother shows up, tells you that you were a subject of a prophecy. Yep, you're the chosen one. And apparently, that's why your stepfather has been keeping an extra close eye on you. It's like he's trying to avoid the prophecy or 
you know, derail the prophecy. And of course, the school's attacked. The crew is basically the gang of uh, thugs that's going to attack has been hiding in uh, hiding in plain sight as the newspaper, the school newspaper staff. Yeah, that's smart. That's very smart. And nobody seems to notice it. They just notice the quality's going down. So, um, <clears throat> when they pull off their attack, certain professors are dead. Others are abducted. <clears throat> Your advisor being one of one is one. And the mystical sorcerer's appliance is taken. In fact, they've also gone to various islands in the, uh, in the sea that is around your area, or that your country is around, stealing the appliance parts from those various islands. So... You must basically get everything you need together to find, first off, be able to trek out on this journey. And this is a game that will punish you if you don't get everything you need. I, mean, I honestly don't know why they have the time mechanic in the game, to be honest. But they do. They do. Anyhow. I mean, you do have to stop and rest every once in a while. So, basically, Ernie must come to the rescue. And so, he must uh, get a means to travel the ocean, the very end to the various islands. And each island is its own chapter, and each island is its own uh, puzzle to solve. I think the longest one that takes is <clears throat> the island of Lost Souls. It's one of the first islands you go to. There are 80 individuals on this island that you must rescue. And they've been changed into stuff. And you have to determine how to bring them back by what you see. Your descriptions are somewhat vague, but allow you to figure things out. And also, there are some fairies running around looking for people, so they have, uh, they'll throw you a name every once in a while. For example, if when you arrive on the island, you will find a sign. A sign says that you, the mayor, who le is basically begging for help on the sign, and he manages to put on the sign his name as Blaze. There is a fire. A fire. It's a blaze. So you basically go around like that. You find there's a pack of there's a gang uh, there's a pack of lupine animals. That's a wolf gang. Now this game also ha is like a step up from and Legend had a very good mechanic going with those games. Uh, you had an item list of what you had in your inventory, you had a command list or what like not was in your inventory, you had a of everything you could interact with in the scene. You had a verb list, you had a description in the lower right corner, you had a picture in the upper right corner, you had a compass to show you what you could do direction wise and all that. So that was a very good format that they had because it was a little bit more visual. 
And if you wanted to, you could bring up a map of the area you were in. I should have mentioned that before, but... It helps you get around, like, the school and the, some of the islands. But once you free all 80 souls, you are able to move on. And it should be noted that because of the humor of the game and it doesn't want to give everything quite away, the Island of Lost Souls is spelled S-O-L-E. And uh, with the map that came with the game, uh, yeah, the Island of Lost Souls looks like a foot print. I kid you not, if you were to look at the map at some of these islands, there is a dead giveaway of what you're going to be dealing with. A one island shaped like an hourglass. That's the uh, that's uh, the Isle of where time goes backwards. And they really lived that one up. All the speech is backwards. You have to read it. This is, and that's a section where you have to, literally, you're going by what has been said to you to deduce what action you need to type in. I mean, the, uh, The aisle of where time goes backwards, and this is one of those where you have your naughty bits, and sometimes these can be done in alternate orders. I will just tell you that right now. But if you go to, if you go in a wrong order, what you're going to have to do is backtrack and go to, you know, islands you've been on to get to the next island you need to get to, due to distance travel. Uh, you go to the aisle of, you know, where time runs backwards, and that one's worth a giggle. I mean, you're basically, somebody's, quote, filming a magical version of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, except it's not three bears, but three uh, slime devils or something like that. <clears throat> and, of course, uh, you're working backwards, so you're doing everything backwards. So that's more deduction of what you should do. And it's also one of those where if you say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, you are... Uh, well, you're going to break the fabric of the universe. Uh, but it's funny because... Well, how do you do it? Uh, well, it's all a matter of uh, somebody's been eating my, you know, if you know the story of the three little, uh, the three Goldilocks and the three bears, basically that's, uh, Goldil uh, the bears have porridge, but it's too hot, you know, it's not right, so you just go, they're going to go out for a walk. Uh, Goldilocks comes in, sees the porridge. You know, too hot, too cold, just right. You sit in the chairs, too hard, too soft, just right. And I sleep in the bed, same thing. Of course, the chair breaks and all that, but for this, instead, it's the food. I think it's whey bread. I think it was whey bread. Way bread, and depending if you choose nice or naughty mode, well, I chose naughty mode, so it's, they each have a concubine. And instead of beds, they have slime bath, uh, mud baths. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny when you get to the part where the, and all the text is backwards, so if, it may take you a moment, <laughs> depending on how your mind works, to read it backwards. I have to laugh that the baby slime devil, or whatever it was, 
It's like somebody's been sleeping with my concubine and come and they knocked her up. That's the humor. I mean, this is a game from the same mind that thought up the leather goddess of Phobos. If you don't know about that, look it up. I played that game when I was in college, and that was actually a fun game, and I beat it. Doing what any good-natured person does and maps it out. Another island is the island of... Um, Let's face it, in the game, it's called the Island of Horny Women. If it's a nice mode, they're nuns. If it's the naughty mode, they're Amazons who need to repopulate. Yeah, in the one video, if you've seen my playthrough, the video is actually, I actually went to the Island of the Women before I went to the island where time goes backwards. And so, my cover image on that and the title of it is Backwards. Yeah, this was a game where this was a game that basically told us that Death by Snooze New was possible before Futurama made it funny. So, Ernie and will have to, you know, of course, get uh, <clears throat> is the guest of honor. And then he has to escape because he's not going to keep up with all the women. I mean, he's got to save his school. Some people, some guys would rather die happy. But, you know, in order to get out of there, you have to, of course, uh, do some cross-dressing. So, you know, that's how that works. Good thing he hasn't grown a beard yet. After that, you must head to the aisle, uh, uh, the restaurant at the end of the ocean. You must head there first because to go there, you where you basically go through a restaurant that goes through six, the six stages of apparently restaurants. You know, open, classy, drops down to mediocre, drops down to, you know, a dive and then closes. It stores, quote, forever, something like that. So, of course, you have to go through, get everything you need there. And, of course, once you get what you have there, you can then access the Isle of the Gods. Where we run into what is uh, supposed to be like Hephaestus and uh, Aphrodite. Except, I believe it's Ocarina and Glockenspiel. Yeah, so you have to uh, maneuver that situation. And uh, Ocarina is basically as amorous as Aphrodite was. Or is, or however you want to look at it. Glockenspiel is your typical, like, Hephaestus. Of course, he's willing to punish anyone who sleeps with his wife. So you have to clean up the trash of the gods. Of course, once you successfully get that, that done and skedaddle before the fight gets, goes out of control, and then you're able to head to the final location, which is Fort Blackheart. I think it was Blackheart. But Fort Black, we'll call it. 
and you will discover that it is remarkably like your situ like <laughs> the simulation you were given. Except with the simulation, you never got past the uh, rescuing the damsel. And yes, you must do everything right here. It also turns out that the damsel in distress is your quote, high school crush, uh, childhood crush, whatever you want to call it, crush, your big crush, Lola Tiger Lily. And uh, your typical sense, she is definitely the girl that's out of Ernie's league. And has no redeeming hope of uh, <clears throat> ending up with her, I don't think. But a boy could dream. Of course, getting through the fort, you find out the man behind all this was Joey Rottenwood. Yes, your ste evil stepfather. Now, apparently he knew of a prophecy that was delivered to your mother. And so he was basically putting himself in control so he could <clears throat> divert the prophecy. <clears throat> he was also trying to figure out the secrets to the sorcerer's appliance. And maybe have found it to cause a complete reset of the world, complete, give him complete power or something. Of course, uh, once you distract him, you have to uh, basically <clears throat> have to deactivate the device before it goes kerblooey. Uh, you have uh, I have a time limit. However, Professor Tickinglock, in one of his mem moments of lucidity, uh, tells you, and that that's uh, two turns for the people playing at home. You know, I have those fourth wall breaks because <laughs> this game is silly. Could be considered wrong nowadays, but it's definitely silly. So you and of course it has a fantastically unrealistic way to prevent doomsday as in it requires a specific amount of manure from a specific animal. Well, what do you know? You got a spell to create that animal, and you've also found a spell that will induce explosive diarrhea. And thus, you save the day. Uh, the police come into the look. The, the, the uh, quote police force comes in to cap to arrest Rottenwood and his gang. Unfortunately, they get distracted by the same thing you use to quote distract Rottenwood, so he's able to sneak away. Ernie, for his efforts of bravery and saving the school, gets a bill for damages. Possible suspension for breaking so many rules. However, Professor Ticking Clock basically says, forget the fe those fees. Forget the, ex the, the suspension. You're getting advanced to, uh, to your sophomore year. And thus we end Spellcasting 101. Saucers get all the girls. You know, it's basically it's a product of its times 
with the humor of the times. It's got its charm still, if you ask me. I mean, it's not every day that the nerdy character has all the beautiful women going after him. It's not every game that involves such a temporal paradox. In this case, time running backwards. That has its charm. Not every game has that, and you know it, it's it makes adds to the humor of it. While it doesn't have much of quote college life in it, it does have the stereotypes in there that got famous in the eighties. And I will admit that almost every one of those stereotypes that I saw growing up just made me want to uh, not attend a college with a fraternity and sorority system. But in the end, I mean, this game was a treat to play. I mean, like I said, I didn't play it until I was in, in college. But I saw advertisements. I saw the box. I mean, and it was a box that called to the hormonal people at the time. I mean, you see a nerdy, wi a nerdy wizard with two hot babes. Whoa! That called to every gamer of the time. Of course, that was uh, gamers were still thought of as predominantly male. And you know, this is the concept. You know, in some ways, this is the. It was a concept of an adult Harry Potter. To a degree. Playing on the tropes of not the evil stepmother, but the evil stepfather. The chosen one being a male wizard. Before he even gets to be a wizard. This is a pretty good game. It's absurd. The story is absurd, given the mystical elements of it that falls in the sort. I mean, you can play it either in nice mode or naughty mode. I honestly wonder how many people played it in nice mode just to see what it was after playing it in naughty mode. It was a terrific mix of what was Zork, except advancing it with graphics and yeah, even the graphics have some sort of minor animation to them. Has some music to it. But, you know, it's, it's a good game. A very good game. I definitely recommend it. Especially if you want to see the classics. Legend is no longer about, but you can definitely find some of its games out there. In fact, uh, I think Steam and GOG both have the whole complete sorcerer, the sorcerer's spellcasting series. And I will cover those when I play them. After I play them. Again. <laughs> Thank you for listening, if you still are, and I do hope you're all well, and Give this video a like. I greatly appreciate it. And subscribe. Bye all.